Brother Pat's sermon text is Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For both he that sacrificed, sacrificeth, and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto the, my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Dear Heavenly Father, I will give thanks for this day that you've given us, and I hope that Brother Pat will have strength to speak, and the people of the church will have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, and thank you. Hebrews chapter 2 has been a great blessing to me in, in preparation for this. I I'm just going to trust that it will do the same for you. Um, we're here, we're talking about sanctification, and we're talking about the association of sanctification with the gospel of Christ. Um, and so I want to make some preliminary statements, and then I kind of want to tie those things together uh, before we get into the meat of the text. But sanctification is something that takes place here. Uh, in it, men are being changed from what they are to what they shall be. Uh, this can only be accomplished by being joined to the Lord. So it's not, it's not, this isn't something that's going to happen apart from him or away from him. It's, it's in our joining to him that this is accomplished. Uh, this fellowship with deity, being a partaker of the Godhead, has built-in ramifications. Um, and I'm going to mention two of them. One is being joined to the Lord, being a partaker of the Godhead, and, and being in fellowship with God and with his son, Jesus Christ will mean suffering for you here, but it will also mean glory for you there. And I want to talk about that this morning. It also means in your fellowship with the Godhead, you're going to become like the Godhead. You're going to be transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So those are the kind of the things I want to uh, discuss this morning. But really, when we think about the gospel, we're talking about bringing defiled man into not only a fellowship with the holy, holy, holy God, but also bringing them into his likeness and making them like him. This is a very large work, uh, the likes of which I'm not sure I, I, I really grasp now and I had grasped prior to this, and I want to continue to increase in this. This is a, this is a big this is a big work. It's going, to take a, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take all of the Godhead. It's going to take uh, the fellowship of the saints. Even it's going to take your effort in this. And, and, but, but yet, nevertheless, the salvation of God is, is, uh, is sufficient for this work. Um, but, you know, this, this text that I'm dealing with, you know, the psalmist said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And that's, I find myself saying that quite frequently. What is, what is man that thou, O oh God, art mindful of him? And throughout the course of the scriptures and uh, the ministry of the apostles, it, it's, it's good for us to recount what is man. And then, and then this side of being joined to the Lord, what, well, well, what is man now? And so I kind of want to do that here because um, the scriptures have spoken about the condition of man and who uh, they actually are. And the average man that you come across in your daily life doesn't know who he is. But the, the scripture has, has, has uh, given a record here. Men are foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasure, hateful and hating one another. This is the record of who man is. And men generally think too highly of themselves as they ought. But I want to show you that what God is doing in sanctification is bringing men from there far higher. It's like, we're, we're, well, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. <clears throat> Men walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. They have their conversation in lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. They are by nature children of wrath. They're unrighteous, ungodly. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. They do not glorify God. They are not thankful. They have become vain in their imaginations. Their foolish hearts have become darkened. This is where you were, brethren. 
Uh, they do not retain God in their knowledge. They are filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, strife, all evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. These, they, they not only do these things, but they take pleasure in those who do the same. And such were some of you. Like this, we, in, in order for us to properly see sanctification and the association with this, with the gospel and what God is doing and the eternal purpose of God, we got to see that. And praise God, we've been delivered from that. But that's where we were, and that's where, where others are. Yet, see, what has happened here is that the Lord has laid the iniquity of them all upon Christ. And he, by the sacrifice of himself, put away sin once for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. We're, this is the experience that we have. We want to understand our experience. This is what's going on in salvation. While the entire race was cursed of God by their transgressions of the law, Jesus became a curse for them and delivered them from the curse. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. This Messiah has come and has finished the transgression, made an end of sins, made reconciliation for iniquity, brought in everlasting righteousness, sealed up the vision and prophecy, and anointed the most holy. This is the work of the Messiah. This is what he is doing. And so now what we deliver to one another is this everlasting gospel can be preached because of what Christ has accomplished. We can say these things, and we can affirm these things, and we can have confidence. Remember who we were, and now we can have confidence standing before the holy God. How is that possible? Because, because of the Lord's work in sanctification. The everlasting gospel has gone out and is calling men to turn from their wickedness and turn to God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from their sins and justified freely from all things. Now, Jesus has issued the invitation, come unto me and you will find rest. And again, come and follow me. You see this, what Jesus was speaking, he was calling men to himself. This is involved in our sanctifications. Leave where you are and come unto me. This is what's involved. Now the ambassadors of Christ also herald the word, be ye reconciled, right? The spirit and the bride say, come. And those who hear us say, come. And let all who are thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. So what is man? What is man? Men are vessels in which and by which God is displaying his glory, his wisdom, his power in saving. Like he's, he's manifesting himself. All of what's going on here is to really reveal who God is. We're a display of who, what is man that thou art mindful of? You're going to be the vessels that I'm going to show my mercy in forgiving your sins. You're going to be the vessels I'm going to show how wise I am in, in, and how just I am in, in, in justifying you. So these are, all, these are all involved in our salvation. This is what the gospel is about, that we're actually coming up to the holy, holy, holy God, and we're allowed to stay. It's done in righteousness. It's the right thing to do because of what Christ has done. And this is all a display of God's glory. And so when we're talking about what is man that thou art mindful of, we've got to see this is, this is what man is. We're vessels being fit for the master's use. Those who are afar off are brought nigh by the blood of Jesus. Sheep who had once gone astray, heading off in their own way, have come to themselves and returned to the shepherd and bishop of their souls. Sinful men have entered into the holiest of all by a new and living way. And I suggest to you that we exist now remaining in the earth to be a display to principalities and powers in heavenly places of the manifold wisdom of God. The church is a witness of this. We're, we're a witness of the mercy of God, the righteousness of God, and even the purpose of God in God sanctifying us into his likeness. These things are happening. I thought about that text in Corinthians, but these things are kind of happening to us to to kind of teach about the Lord to them. You know, this is kind of how, it's kind of how it happened in the back past for us. Things happen to the Israel to teach us. Things are happening to us to teach angels about, about who God is. <clears throat> the culmination of this will be in heaven when the entire body of Christ is completed and fully displaying the glory of the Lord. And this is just, brethren, this is just a large work. 
And the more we think about it, it seems the larger it is. You know, you just keep on growing in this. God, in saving man, is making them suitable for the world to come where they will experience an unfiltered, uninhibited, unlimited fellowship with the Godhead, where it can be said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This is what we're moving towards. This is what's being accomplished by Christ. There, those who are sanctified will be completely fit for the master's use with no hindrance. What the Lord was working in them here in an adverse and hostile environment will be amplified there in an advantageous environment. So, So you're being prepared now in an environment that's actually at work against you, but you're being prepared here in that situation so that when you get there and there is no hostility, there is no flesh to deal with, there is no other contentions that you have to deal with it'll be it'll be a greater work and you'll be you'll be fit for it Amen. you everything the body that you have will actually be an aid to you not a hindrance to you and the environment around you will be a help to you you'll be in a place wherein dwells righteousness I, well i'm just looking forward to it so that's what i mean when we're talking about a large work you th- i was thinking about sanctification and, and i don't know where to stop with this this just keeps on going and now we're going in the world to come and suddenly i got lots of pages that i'm working with here <clears throat> So I'm, I'm going to try to stick with this text because I really appreciate you, brethren, and your ministry. And, and this is how the Lord works. We, we each kind of share what we have, and it all fits together. We don't, I'm grateful that we're not required to say it all ourselves. But Jesus, Jesus is a sanctifier. So concerning man, it, it, you know, thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. Um, did set all things over the works of, of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, left nothing that is not put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus. And so there, there's a, in fact, our healing from our condition begins with, with looking unto Jesus. We, when you, you remember how this is kind of, this is kind of shown to us in John chapter three, uh, when, when it's spoken about when Moses lifted up the, the serpent in the wilderness and you, and you look to him and, and are healed. This is kind of our experience here. It, it's in looking unto Jesus that that we can kind of get our bearings of where we are and where we are going. <clears throat> in looking unto Jesus, we are able to see, well, we're able to see what we should have done. <laughs> he, he, he lived the way we ought to have lived, and we hadn't. But the way he's living, that's what, that's what we ought to do as well. Jesus is all that men should have been, um, but he's also the first of what they shall be. So in looking unto Jesus, we can see like where, where the Lord's bringing us in this. <clears throat> In looking unto Jesus, we see where God is bringing us. We are being brought from the likeness of Adam into the likeness of Christ. Remember how the songwriter said, Adam's likeness now we face, stamp thine image in its place. That's kind of the experience that we have here. We're being changed into the image of Christ from glory to glory. For we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are being transformed from the same image from glory to glory. And that by the spirit of God. The Spirit of God is working this. I had a, a lot of difficulty with that trying to transform myself. <laughs> I, I imagine anyone else who tried to do that had some difficulty as well. It's just by the Spirit of the Lord is working this as we look unto Jesus and we can see his glory. So this is, not only is this accomplished by Jesus, it's actually accomplished in Jesus. So sanctification, it's not really a, a touch not, taste not, handle not situation. That's not how it's being worked out. We're actually in a vital living union with the Godhead. We're joined to the Lord so that, so that we're empowered by our fellowship there. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent uh, me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught of God. And every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, Father cometh unto me. That's what Jesus said. And he said that because in saving man, God is giving man to Jesus. This is a good arrangement for our salvation. It's not just come up to me, it's son, bring them to me. And he's fit for the work. And so this is all in accord with, um, in, in the prayer, uh, in John chapter 17, uh, speaks of, uh, Jesus speaks of all those whom thou hast given me. So in, in our salvation, God has given us to Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. And in order to do this, um, to do his will, and sanctify the people, God gives us to Christ and commissions Jesus, save them, keep them, teach them, lead them, bring them to me. 
and it will be said of him, well done, good and faithful servant. <clears throat> and really, this purpose is it's much bigger than us. Uh, We've got to see this as well. The, the, the purpose of sanctification is bigger, it's bigger than us. Um, in sanctification, uh, we, we don't, we, we're, not really, we're not becoming more saved, so to speak. Um, by his one offering, Jesus has perfected forever them that are, that are sanctified. And that condition can't really be improved upon. And being justified freely from all things can't be improved upon. Um, so we, we cannot be improved upon these things that, that Christ has, has done. Uh, that needed to happen so that we can be sanctified and made suitable to enter into uh, the work of the Lord. Our increasing conformity into the image of Christ isn't to make us more acceptable. It's to make us more useful uh, to, to the master. And even, even that work of making us more useful here, that work is preparatory for the world to come. So our sanctification, like all, like all provisions in the new covenant, uh, really, is in Jesus. Uh, of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us sanctification. So it's, it's in Jesus that this takes place. God has placed us in his son, who is a, see, and we can see Jesus as a tried stone, as a refuge, as a strength. As a, as a bulwark, as a high tower. Uh, and so we've been placed in him. He's a, he's a stronghold for us, yet, yet he, he's like the Father's hand that is not shortened to save. And yet he's also, he's also like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And so, um, in, in other words, you are safe and secure and will be kept by the power of God through faith unto a salvation ready to be revealed, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be without hardship. We got to see this is where we can really understand our current experience. And this was a blessing to me, and I'm going to want to share it with you. Our sanctification is, is really being worked in a furnace of affliction where we will be purified in fire and washed thoroughly with soap. We can understand our current sufferings that these aren't separated from the salvation that's being brought about in Christ. These aren't separate from our sanctification. God is at work in those sufferings. And they vary among all of us, but God is at work in him leading us and teaching us and keeping us and, and, and really kind of training us and preparing us for greater works. And, and I, I, for one, am able to endure um, and glory in sufferings with that understanding. And in all of this, here's a thought. Christ is not ashamed to be called our brethren. For, for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. The church, as a royal priesthood of God, is holy unto the Lord, right? Holiness unto the Lord. They have been bought, brought into a fellowship with Jesus, both in proximity and likeness. And for this cause, they are sure to experience suffering here and glory there. Jesus has said, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Again, the apostle whom Jesus loved said, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't marvel at this. It's because of that union with the Lord that the world hates you. That's why. And so you've been brought into that. You've been, you've been sanctified, but that, what comes along with that is, is sufferings. Uh, we suffer here because we have been joined to the Lord. If we were in the world, the world would love its own. But we are not like the world. We are not of the world. Uh, we have been sanctified unto God, and it has been determined by God that through much tribulation we must inherit the kingdom of God. Now, whether that be intense persecution, whether that just be uh, the, the, the suffering of temptation, suffering temptation, and not, be, not being uh, given into it, that, that experience of suffering, or whether it be the, the, just dwelling in the present evil world and in a vile body and have opposition, enemies within and enemies without, whatever that suffering may be for you or for me, the... the the truth is the same here. We've got to see the, the Lord is with us in it, and the Lord is working through it. <clears throat> and knowing this, can, we can glory in our tribulation. Sufferings cause us to rely on and to seek after res resources that are above this world. They cause us to long for the homeland and make a request for power from there. And you'll be fully aware of what is actually helpful to you and what is worthless when you're going through sufferings. There's things that, 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 you know, even words that people can speak. That is not a help to me at all. I don't need a command. Right? I need help from above. I need something to believe in. I need something to, to hold on to. And that's what's provided in the gospel of Christ. That's what's provided. These are the heavenly resources that are given to us from above. <clears throat> For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, 
Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worth, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And I mention this because this inner man renewal is accomplished in sanctification. And it happens while the outer man is perishing. These things are going together. And perhaps I've just been naive, but as these things, I kind of, I kind of, I was kind of up and down on a roller coaster, like, well, this is a good day and this is a bad day. And now I can see the Lord's working in all of it. And all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. In your suffering, brethren, whatever it may be, God is working this thing out. And he's, he's making you more uh, into his image and more fit for the master's use. He's preparing you for greater works. And when you can see that, when you can see that, you can glory in your tribulations. You really can. <clears throat> I, um, we, not, we, we, just, we must not be confused about our own experience in this world. It'll cause undue heartache. Amen. But the hardship and the heartache that we may face, the, these, they're not enemies of the transformation that's taking place. They're teammates. They're actually working alongside of it. Now, I'm going to give you an illustration. This is my own illustration, so you can take it for what it's worth. But I train athletes, and, and when it's, when it's off-season or pre-season, uh, I'm preparing them for the, for the work. I'm preparing them for the performance. And what I do with them is I, I make it really difficult, and I load weights upon them. And, I, and, and I, I, I wear them out until they're exhausted, and then I tell them to do the work. And I can kind of see that's kind of how our suffering here is. To where we're kind of like, we're, we're loaded up and we're, we're trying to accomplish these great works with a lot of weight on us. And, 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 and when we're exhausted, and we're, I, I, this year has been exhausting for me personally. And I was distraught by that because I felt like I wasn't able to, to do things that I previously had to do. And it was more of a time thing. But now I'm seeing that the Lord's training me to do this work in the midst of, well, just with a lot of weight on your back. And because, because there's coming a day when the weights are going to be removed. And when you take the weights off and your, bodies are, and, you, and your bodies are refreshing, you got a body that's working for you. Well, now you can just go far more. You can do far more because you're not hindered anymore. And that's kind of how it is with our sufferings is that you're going through the work with all, this, with all this weight on you. You're going through the work while you're exhausted, while you're tired, and you're still being called to the same work. This is not an excuse to just, like, falter and to quit. It's actually preparing you for something up above when all of those adverse circumstances are just, they're, now they're moved away, and now you can just, now you can just fly, right? So that's kind of that's the experience that I, as far as I can see it. it was, but see, we see Jesus in this. You got to see Jesus in this as a forerunner. Um, it was fitting for God to perfect Jesus through suffering, and that was, that was preparatory for greater work that he had in the world to come, was it not? And so he, he suffered being tempted so that he could come to the aid of them that are tempted because there was a, a greater work that had to be accomplished. And so he was, that was preparatory. See, we see Jesus. We see Jesus. And so we can see what God is doing with us because we're, we're in fellowship with the Lord. And the Lord made it through without faltering once. He's able to show us how to make it through without faltering as well and then, and then enter into this greater work in the world to come. Now, now, of course, his suffering was, was different than ours in the sense that um, he, he was being tempted as something that he never had to, you know, in, endure before. Um, so that, but it was so that he could be an effectual high priest to those who are, who are tempted. But his experience in this qualified him to be an effective uh, minister, to, to minister mercy and grace uh, to those who draw near to them and draw near to him in their time of need. Uh, but the people, too, must suffer. When we are tempted and we draw near to the throne of grace, Jesus is able to show us how to overcome the temptation without sinning against God. And this is, this is all involved in our sanctification. So temptation often comes for us like it did with Job. Uh, it comes through affliction. It comes through taunting. It comes through just agitations of every, of every kind. Um, I don't think we want to like pin down this is the kind of thing. It, it's different. It's, it's various. Um, Jesus is able to strengthen us and to show us how to navigate through those temptations without like sinning with our lips like he's able to know so we wouldn't curse God and die he's able to he's able to teach us how to do this because he's done it without faltering furthermore if we do sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous one and his blood through which we've been perfected forever is able to offer pardon from sin and cleansing from its defilement and so I, I look at this really as a fellowship and because they're all of one both him that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are of one. And 
Paul counted all that he had gained through the Jews' religion to be lost in view of the knowledge of God and fellowship with Christ. It was his singular aim to know him, that I might know him and be found in him. Furthermore, he wanted to know, he wanted to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings to be made conformable unto his death. And I think this is, this, is, this is what we're talking about here, the fellowship of his sufferings. <clears throat> Paul was not interested in severe treatment of the body or looking for persecution. I don't know if that needs to be said, but he wasn't like looking for it. He wasn't welcoming it. I just wanted to, I wanted to be hard. But, but he wanted to know what it was like to suffer with the Lord and, and overcome it. Right, so along with the fellowship of the sufferings, he wanted to know the power of the resurrection. Right, so those, that's that's the overcoming power to, to get through the suffering. Uh, being separated unto God as Jesus is separated unto God is taking up the call. Yet not my will, but thine be done. And so we want to know the sufferings and resisting even to the shedding of blood. <clears throat> it is enduring suffering of every kind and refusing to save your life by giving into the temptation to sin, knowing that whoever saves his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for Christ's sake and the gospel's sake shall save it and shall keep it. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. See, this is, this is what he's bringing us to. It's not just a pattern that we got to follow. He's bringing us into it, and then we're commissioned to do it just like Jesus did. Arm yourself likewise <clears throat> with the same mind that he that had suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. And so when the temptation comes, you got to suffer it. You got to, rather than giving, because a lot of times temptation comes, you can just give into it, and there's, not, there's no suffering there. You suffer through it. You suffer through, you endure the temptation, and then and you cease from sin in doing that. Amen. In sanctification, we are able to learn the fellowship of his sufferings in enduring the onslaught of principalities and powers, of rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. There's an onslaught going on, and we've got to be aware of it. This has great implications, as we were just talking. This has great implications about the purpose and the necessity of ministering one to another in the fellowship of the saints because every single one of us is going through this, and it's vital when we come together that somebody stands up and says something that is of a benefit to the person sitting down, and we've got to share that information. We've got to share that, that fellowship so that we can all be built up because there's urgency in this. Brethren, we can't just come together and just talk. There needs to be power in what we say. And I'm not talking about just screaming and yelling. I'm talking about saying something of substance that we can lay hold of. And where that doesn't take place, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous time if, if the people of God aren't being built up, which you can see, you can see this around you. But we got, forget about what's going on around us. We got to take care of this doesn't take place within us. That this doesn't take place in our own assemblies. That, 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 that we're, just, we're just talking about what's going on out there, brethren. We have enough work cut out for ourselves, right? And so we got to build each other up in this. Why? Because there's an onslaught going on. There's a war, it's a warfare, and it's a fight. And we need help, brethren. Amen. You have help. You are help. And so we got to, you know, redeem the time with that. <clears throat> we're also able to endure and, and know the fellowship of his sufferings, but we're also able to learn the power of his resurrection in fighting. The power of his resurrection in getting up and the power of his resurrection in overcoming, even in weakness. The powers of darkness, they may have their hour, but they shall not prevail against those who are in Christ. That's the power of the resurrection. So actually, I, I just like this fellowship. Jesus is with us in this purification. In sanctification, we're being purified through the sufferings that are being, it's actually described as being accomplished. Be, sufferings that are being accomplished by Christ. And make no mistake about it, when purification happens, uh, you're in a fire. It's a fire. It's not something that's, that's like pleasant to the, the, the current experience, but we know what's going on. Um, going through the fire, however, you'll find like there's like another one. There's one like the Son of God with you, right? So there's another one with you to help you. That's a fellowship, and that's, an, that's, that's a fellowship that you, kinda, you won't find anywhere else. Uh, but he's with you in the sanctification. He's with you in going through the fire, even the Son of God. And when you come out of the fire, that which is temporal will have perished. It's just gone. And that which is eternal will remain, and that without spot. That's why the fire comes. Amen. And we shall be glorified. I'm talking about in Jesus. Is where it's and we're going to be glorified together with him. These things aren't separated. They aren't separated. 
Being sanctified or set apart for God means that in this world you shall suffer, but in the world to come you shall be glorified, and that with him. Your association and fellowship with the Godhead makes you a stranger here, but a fellow citizen there. You have been crucified unto the world, and the world has been crucified unto you. There actually is no fellowship between, uh, between you and the world, uh, but there is fellowship between you and heaven. While this may not yet appear to the naked eye, and make no mistake about it, the people around you won't know it. And that's because your life is hid with Christ and God. But there's coming a time, now it's apparent by faith, but there's coming a time where it's going to be revealed. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Christ is not ashamed to call his brethren because we too have been given power to be called the sons of God. The Spirit itself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him. That's like the next step. You're a son of God. If you suffer with him, you shall be glorified together with him. That's how it works. And, and if we don't know this, we're going to be confused about our experience. But if we know it, we can glory in tribulation. All right, lastly, I want to talk about this fellowship with God. It, it, it brings us into conformity with him. He's not ashamed. We're actually, we're growing up individually, but also as, as, as the entire body. We're growing up into the likeness of Christ. Our sanctifier knows that we need to be sanctified. <laughs> Our need for sanctification, that is having fallen short of the glory of God and having been separated, that doesn't disqualify us from the fellowship that is granted to us in our justification. See, we had to be justified so that we could come into this fellowship, and we have been. And what you were in the past doesn't disqualify you. So just, if just remembered no more. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, but by Jesus, we have access to faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You've come into like a, a rich room of, of divine resources. You, by faith, you have access to grace. Justified access to grace. There's a lot of help in, in grace. You've got all the help that you need to get it, to get from here to there. And so he's not ashamed to be called, to be called our brethren. And so we can see and believe this. Then we'll see that Jesus is not ashamed of us. He's not, he is not considering how he found us, but where he's bringing us. And by the way, it's actually good for us to, to look at one another this way. Not, not how they came in, but where they're going. And, and in the assembly, I'm speaking. And so we become one with the Lord. Jesus is like, he's like the who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jesus is the one that will ascend to the hill of the Lord, but anyone who comes with him, he's bringing people with him up there. He's making us suitable there. He's assimilating us into his person that we may ascend with him. He's not saying, I overcame the world, now you overcome the world. I showed you how to do it, now do it. He's saying, I overcame the world, now I'm going to help you overcome the world. Now you come with me to overcome the world. That's how it's being done. We've been joined with him in our quest to come to God. Uh, maybe more appropriately stated, God has given us to Jesus so that Jesus can bring us to him. And when we arrive, we will be more like Jesus than like Adam. <clears throat> we are brought into fellowship, like a partnership with our state, workers together with God. We are made partaker of the Godhead. This is what sanctification is about. Not just separateness, but God-likeness. Not just what you're separated from, what you're separated to. That's the emphasis here. We're not just talking about moral uprightness. We're talking about conformity to the Savior. The sanctified become like the sanctifier. The sanctifier who did no sin is one with, with the sanctified who sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This is true because they have been washed. They have been sanctified. They have been justified. They are now being refined, renewed, restored. They've been made holy by his blood and perfected forever by his one offering. They've been joined to the Lord and are one spirit with him. They and all they that are sanctified are actually one in Christ. And this actually fulfills Jesus' request when he prayed that they may all be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. This is the fellowship we're talking about. This is, the, this is what it is to be sanctified unto God. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given unto them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and has and thou hast loved me. <laughs> so the, all, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Oneness, and oneness means likeness. It's already been brought up by Amos. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Our fellowship with the Godhead, our sanctification unto God, 
is possible because we're new creatures and being conformed into the image of Christ. This is God's purpose in saving man. He is manifesting his glory and making us as we should be, righteous. And, and that's because that's how he is. He's not just, we're not just being made righteous just because it's right, but because he is. Conformity to him. That's what I mean. It's not just moral uprightness, not just the right. It's, it's conformity into who he is. And he is righteous. He is just. He is loving. So all those things come along with it. And this is contained in the scriptures uh, and is, is the reason for our justification. It's God's intent that he be our God and we be his people. Holiness is required not just because it's right, but because God is holy. That's why. Ye shall be holy, for I am holy. We are to walk in the light as he is in the light. We are to purify ourselves even as he is pure. We are to be righteous even as he is righteous. Boldness in the day of judgment is because as he is, so are we in the world. So this is what we're talking about. And, and, and the, this is bringing about the presentation of a glorious church like him. Through sanctification, the eternal purpose of God as far as being worked out in the earth is being accomplished. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, those he, he did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We come to the love, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's where we're going up to. That's where we're growing up to. Filled with all the fullness of God. Like that's got to be our goal. We're talking about goal. That's your goal. To be filled with all the fullness of God. For the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. Remember they gave some as apostles and prophets. Why? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. To the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To grow up in all things into him. In all things which is the head. Even Christ. And so finally brethren the. The culmination, what God is doing in the earth, uh, remember in 1 Corinthians 15, this word is given, and I'm just going to leave you with it, when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's where we're going, brethren.